All right, guys, last two examples. Let's say we're given two functions, f of x equals 6x and g of x equals x to the 3 fourths power. We're asked to find what f over g of x would be and what the domain of that new function would be. So f over g of x, hopefully you remember, just means find f of x divided by g of x. So we're just dividing the two functions by each other. f, which is 6x, goes on top x to the 3 fourths, which is g of x, goes on the bottom. And here we can use the quotient property of exponents to say, since bases are same, and we're dividing the expressions, we can subtract the powers. So the power of x up top is 1. 1 minus 3 fourths is 1 fourth. Now, domain of 6x, 6x, hopefully you remember, is going to be a linear function with slope 6. Linear functions are defined everywhere, so the domain of 6x will be negative infinity to infinity. The domain of x to the 3 fourth is 0 to infinity. So here's where uh, knowledge of past sections or you know knowing domains and, and ranges from past sections is going to be vital. Another way of writing x to the 3 fourth is the fourth root of x raised to the third power. Because I have an even index, the radicand of an even root has to be non-negative, meaning it has to either be zero or it has to be positive. It cannot be a negative number. And we, we cannot get real roots, uh, real numbers, sorry. We cannot take even roots of negative numbers and get real answers, as, as real numbers as answers as a result. Sorry, I probably confused everyone there. Let me restart. We're not allowed to take even roots of negative numbers and get real answers. We're going to get a complex answer or a complex solution, but we're not going to get a real number as, as, at the end. So we know that if we were to plug in zero here, or say zero here, the fourth root of zero would be zero. The zero to the third power would just be zero as well. So since this function was in the denominator, and since the domain is including zero to infinity, I cannot include zero in the domain of the f over g function. Because if I did, that would make the denominator zero, and we're not allowed to have that happen. So the domain of 6x over x to the 3 fourth would be the intersection of these two sets, which will be zero to infinity inclusive, but we have to throw zero away because if I plug zero into the denominator here, I'm going to get a zero, which is undefined. And we're in part B or part two, we're asked to evaluate at x equals 16, which is basically just saying plug 16 into the function. So f over g of x was 6x to the 1 fourth. We just figured that out in part A, or part one rather. And instead of this x, if we replace it with 16, we're going to get 6 times 16 to the 1 fourth. And as before, we can rewrite this exponential form into radical form. It might help you see it, but if you, you, if you already know that 16 to the 1 fourth is 2, you can go directly from there to there. I, I choose to do this so that if someone wants to see it as a radical form, they can. And then finally, 6 times 2 is just 12. The last representation, uh, just for review, we did graphical first, we did algebraic second, and then this is the third or the tabular representation, meaning instead of giving you an equation or instead of giving you a graph, what happens if you're given some selected table of values or selected values in a table? So these are all the x values. These are the y values for f. These are the y values for g. And we're asked to find what f plus g of 3 is. So here I've written out some skeleton frameworks. We know that um, f plus g of 3 is the same as f of 3 plus g of 3, using notation that we learned of the, in the very first page. f of 3 from this uh, table is 10, plus g of 3 is negative 31. So this will be negative 21. 
f minus g of 1 is f of 1 minus g of 1. So f of 1 is negative 4 minus, and here you need to be careful with signs because there's going to be a lot of negatives floating around. You want to make sure that you're putting parentheses around numbers and using the operations that are in the problem. Minus g of negative, uh, g of 1 would be negative 3. So this would be negative 4 plus 3, which is negative 1. f g of 2 is the same as f of 2 times g of 2. f of 2 is 0 times g of 2 is negative 13. 0 times negative 13 is 0. And then lastly, f over g of 0. We're looking to find f of 0 over g of 0. f of 0 is negative 2 over g of 0 is negative 1, which cleans up to 2. Hopefully that helps. You should be able to address most, if not all, of the nitro problems. Uh, please get started.